This episode is brought to you ad-free thanks to all of our wonderful patrons. You can get tons of exclusive content and help us keep the show going by joining at patreon.com slash shonenflop. And welcome to this episode of Shonen Flop, where we talk about manga and Shonen Jump that didn't make it big. I'm David. I'm Jordan. Next week, Jordan is joined by Dylan, because I won't be here, and they're going to be talking <laughs> about Service Wars, which is actually very good. Really? If you'd like to read along with us, be sure to join the discussion in our Discord and submit your six-word summary. Find a link to the Discord in our episode description and on our website, shonenflop.com. Well, real, real quick, David, why won't you be here next week? Because I am going to New Zealand for two weeks. Why, David? I'm going to be in The Rings of Power, the second season. I got cast as one of the Hobbits because they didn't need to use special effects for my height. And it's really funny, like, it coincided with his honeymoon, too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We are joined by our wonderful guest, Amber. Amber, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Do you mind telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, hi. My name is Amber Carr. I go by Bloodberry Part Online. I'm a Twitch partner. But uh, these days, I've been spending more of my time and my effort on my podcast, Skulltenders, which is sort of a uh, D&D actual play that is tightly edited into a radio drama. Hell yeah. It is fantastic. It's really good. Thank you. We're having all the skull tenders on. This is three out of four. Yes. Uh, so listeners, not much <laughs> of a guess who our one of our upcoming guests will be. Well, you know, first, if, if you're not familiar, you should listen to skull tenders and then it won't be a. Uh, yeah, that's true. A surprise, you know, and you should listen to the past three episodes of our podcast, I guess, including this one. And Colin wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Jordan's comment is for people who have already listened to this episode and are just listening to it again. Just listen to all of our episodes and all of Skull Tenders, and then you'll understand. And at the same time, it's like Charlie and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia listen to two things at the same time. Yes. Exactly, yeah. Just put them both on at the same time. It's like Skull Tenders is very anime-inspired. We'll, we'll blend them together. It'll work. There you go. Yeah. And then, Amber, what is your all-time favorite Dungeons & Dragons class? Ooh, it's tough. I get Because it depends, I guess, if you're looking at, like, from a role play perspective or a mechanical perspective. I think that the Life Domain Cleric, like... Ooh, that's a great one. It's just so strong mechanically that it's hard to match up to a lot of other things. But I think my favorite, like, from a role play perspective is probably, like, Artificer. Mmm. Yeah, I like the Mad Science. It's a fun idea. To, it's a fun way to play a class. Artificers are great. I just uh, I played one for the first time a few weeks ago, and it's just you just have so many fucking options, though. Yeah, exactly. In the warm up to this, these two were talking about Magic the Gathering, and now they're talking about D and D classes. I have nothing to contribute to either of these. You've played Dungeons and Dragons before. I've played D and D with you. Yeah, but I like barely remember anything about the classes. Do you not play Baldur's Gate three? A little bit. Well, there you go. The classes are in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, then, then I guess I'm. Uh, I guess my favorite class, based on Baldur's Gate Three, is a, a gay twink. Oh, that's a great class. <laughs> There's OK Buddy Balder, which is just Baldur's Gate Three shit posting. <laughs> what, what's the name of the 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 vampire dude? Asarian. Yeah. Someone said I want a nut in Asarian so bad, but I have a coochie. <laughs> and the top comment was skill issue. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much anyway <laughs> anyway let's get into actually hearing about this vodka so we're talking about chagetcha or chagetcha i'm gonna chagetcha uh i guess i'm just gonna go with chagetcha it was created by yoshio sawaii uh who also made bo 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 if you want to get like just a basic idea imagine if bo 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 was uh less coherent yes i know what i just said there but notable people this guy had his assistance was atsushi namakiri of switch and red blue on this manga don't know either of those you say Matsui of Assassination Classroom. I read a little bit of that. That's a great series. Yeah, on, on Boba Bo. And Naoya Matsumoto of Kaiju Number 8 and previous episode Neko Wappa. Yeah. <laughs> On uh, Shinsetsu Bobo Bo 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 Bo. So this guy did Bo Bo Bo, which <laughs> is insanely popular manga. David, I, I didn't realize until later that like, because like the whole joke is that Bo Bo Bo's power is a uh, fist of the nose hair. It, it just occurred to me, oh my god, that's how fist of the North Star sounds in like Japanese, fist of the nose hair or what? <laughs> yeah, fist of the North Star. Like, oh, that's great. But yeah, the uh, Bo 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 wrapped up in. In late 2005, took a month off to return as Shinsetsu Bo 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 Bo. I guess that's like the that's like Bo 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 Shippuden. Yeah. Maxi B says that it's more Bo Bo Bo, but they have a koala assassin, and it's way worse. It's way worse, and apparently there's some controversy that uh, Maxi B does not go into here. 
But after that, he did uh, Kira Rincho no Abake Festa, which only went for one volume. This was his manga immediately following Chagicha and was apparently a children's book under uh, Shueisha's kids line, Waku Waku. And after that failed, he did Fuwari Don Patch, which went for two years, three volumes in Psycho Jump. And it's like cutesy Bobo Bo, basically, mm-hmm. with Don Patch. And there was another Don Patch series called Onori Don Patch for one volume, Jump Plus. And seems like he made a Yatsuba clone. Apparently these past two manga were just Yatsuba clones with Don Patch instead of the 4chan girl. Mm-hmm. But yeah, enough about that shit. Let's get into the plot summary. Hell yeah. Oh god, the plot. Alright. Wait, there was a plot in this? I'm gonna learn about this plot for the first time reading the summary. <laughs> this this was tough to write. The fact that this is like maybe eight sentences speaks so much <laughs> about what happened in this. This was simultaneously very difficult and very easy to write. It's strange. But yeah, Gouda Tokyo is a city with the toughest high school delinquents. They're called Yankees. And I'm always just baffled at how many specific types of delinquents there are in Japan. But these high schools there engage in combat for dominance. One day, Chagacha or Chagecha or Chagacha of Kachao. (laughs) <laughs> of Gekiatsu High School returns to the city after two years and just starts fucking shit up. He meets Masoto, his underclassman, and tells him about how the dragon ninjas at Gorilla High are literally sending weak students up the river with watermelons or something. And they defeat him using Chagacha's Yan Ki, and that is, it's like Yankee, but it's Yan and then Ki like the Dragon Ball Z thing. He uses his Yan Ki powers uh, because he is known as the human bike for some reason. Pop- <laughs> yeah, that is never made clear, really. I don't get it. I think that was never made clear it can be said about any sentence after every sentence in this plot summary. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Word makes it to Kabu, Kinta tomorrow. I don't, Kinta don't care. I don't care. Who gives a shit okay, about this? Yeah, the third year president of Nare uh, Sayukan High School, the highest ranked school where someone from Gekiatsu, a high school so low it fell off the chart in one of the few actually funny jokes, defeated Gorilla High. When Chagacha learns just how low Gekiatsu is ranked, he decides to change this. So he goes to an arcade and recruits Kawai Himawari, a girl who goes to his school and is very strong. I'm not going to bother, uh, as David just pointed out, I'm not going to bother uh, correcting the numerous mispronunciations David just made. Jordan, we're four years into this. Just accept it. Uh, I'll accept <laughs> it here. <laughs> All right, but I'll also accept the fact that it's time for Popcorn Amber. Uh, Chagicha then goes to school and joins a team that fights for the school in order to rise in the ranks. There are some other guys on the team, but the only one that really matters is Daraji, who's like a young kid who's got such powerful Yankee he skips several grades, because I guess that's how that works. I guess. <laughs> they have a very, yeah, they have a very large and confusing fight against another high school in which they win in like a sweep, but it certainly doesn't feel that way when you're reading it. I guess. But they rise to B rank as a result, and that's pretty much all that happens. Yeah. Am I forgetting anything? No, I just, none of it matters. None of it matters. Yeah, exactly. No, you're not forgetting anything. Yeah, just imagine the most incoherent gags uh, throughout all of this, and you'll have a pretty good idea of what Chagacha is. Yeah, and then Amber, do you mind actually telling us about the main character of the series? Chagicha? I mean, well, it's hard because the characters, I feel like, are also bizarrely and ill-defined. <laughs> oh, just, yeah, just, you are welcome to try your best, and I do have some notes if you want to read those off. That's a fine starting point. Chagicha is, like, he's supposed to be a third-year student. He looks like a grown man, honestly. Yes. Whereas most of, like, the range in which the ages look like they are compared to, like, the they're actually supposed to all be within, like, three years of each other. Everybody, like, third years look like grown men, and, like, first years look like literal children. Yes. But he seems to just be, his defying power just seems to be that he is super strong. Obviously, he's, he uses his power, the human bike, which is not super clear exactly what that means. He also has a giant poop in the first episode, and I don't think it's ever seen again after that oh so disappointing another one of his defining characteristics seems to be that he smokes cigarettes yeah that's true yeah how dare he that's pretty delinquent of him it's pretty cool and delinquent also like he says that he left for two years where did he go i don't know he came back and he was like i'm back to talk to my parents and then we never see his parents and i don't get it he lives in a cigarette machine 
He does. And he has a giant poop, which was super important and then never showed up again. Yes, it was like a giant poop shield. I will say the bit of him coming out of the cigarette machine and he's like almost the exact same size as it. It's like it's like it's, he's encased in it like a suit of armor more than it is like a house. I did think that was pretty good. Yeah. He's really packed in. It's like uh, Han Solo and the Carbonite. Exactly. We'll get into this, but there's so many times this manga is just almost funny. Yeah. Um, and then J- Jordan, do you want to tell us about Masoto? Uh, so Masoto, he appears for a few chapters. He's like a first year and he meets Chagacha and he's like, oh shit, yo, I'm your underclassman. And Chagacha is like, that's cool. Let's uh, let's work together. And then Chagacha is joining the team to uh, fight in the ranks. They're like, nah, Masoto, you can't join. And then Masoto disappears for the rest of the manga. Yeah, I don't understand what the point of his character was. Yeah, he doesn't really seem to serve any purpose at all. It's almost as if, like, he was a concept that was abandoned as he went further in writing it. Like, Are you saying that this author gave up on some things about this manga? <laughs> really reaching here, I understand. But I get the feeling that maybe this was not the most planned out in advance piece of media I've ever read. Yeah, this is actually not the first time we've read a manga where, okay, Maxi B says it's ambiguous, but we have had authors say, I give up, I can't write this series anymore, and that's why it ends. Yeah. My favorite one is a series called Sakura Tetsu Taiwahen, where it's pretty clearly like the author kind of doing a fourth wall break where he has a character representing himself show up and be like, guys, I'm sorry. You were supposed to be so much better than this. Fuck. I'm, I'm done here. I'm so sorry. Let me end this right now. But yeah, and then to move on to the next character, we have Himawari, who the token female character, I accidentally forgot what her name was, but I actually updated it and somehow that didn't update. So Jordan saw my shame in our notes document. <laughs> but yeah, she's hot headed, very strong, doesn't take no BS, very token female representation in a action manga. Uh, I don't know what else to really say about her. She fights with her phone charm, which is a bowling ball that is hanging, oh, yes. a full sized bowling ball that is hanging from like a chain link chain off of her phone she was gifted it by the muscle king yeah which is, which is a reference was she <laughs> gifted it by the muscle king is that in this manga no, i don't even i know. was making a reference to the last manga we read oh yes you mean saint muscle yes in saint muscle so um amber there is a guy called the muscle king you mean the giant king giant king yes that's a gift from the giant king it's very important he's the giant king he has to be referred to as giant king at all times amber <laughs> He is a giant king. Yes. To be fair. And he gives people giant bowling balls to train with. So like unironically, if this was in the same universe, she might have gotten it from the giant. Anyway, uh, uh, Amber, uh, can you finish up and tell us about Doraji, a.k.a. the little dude? Yeah, Doraji is the student that skipped a bunch of grades on account of like his high Yankee. His power level was just so strong. Yeah. He beat up all of his teachers and they passed. Yeah, he has like, he seems to be some sort of like a, a DBZ pastiche or parody. He's kind of like a Krillin type character. Yeah. It's like hidden powers, difficulty using it. It's like his powers are represented by like a slot machine at times. Mm-hmm. And after a while, this it gets hard to tell which things are like cutaway gags and which things are gags that actually have sort of relevance on the plot. Yeah. But like he like turns into, he puts on like a cat suit at one point, like, an, like a cat costume. I don't know if that's part of his power just a gag they were doing but he's sort of like it, it almost seems like they're setting him up to be like their number two fighter before the series ended he's on the like hover art for the series so he was supposed to be a really big character yeah no pun intended i'm pretty sure one of the first things to happen in this manga is that a tiny dude in a cat suit falls on like a fighter jet piloted by a saiyan yeah and i think that the little cat dude might be doraji maybe huh I don't know. And I think the author might not have known either. No. No. This series is a fucking mess. So why don't we get into why it failed? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so Jordan, what stood out to you as just, I mean, there are so many things that this series did terribly. What, what would you say stood out to you as the first thing? Pure chaos, David. Pure fucking chaos. Like, it is so impossible to follow this series. The series does not let a single joke breathe. It doesn't let you, like... Like, I, I went to read uh, a couple chapters of Bobobo after this, and Bobobo, it's like, they kind of take a few panels at least to tell one joke. This series takes a couple panels to tell, like, three jokes. And so you miss, like, all of them, or 
you grab onto one and kind of lose it and then they're talking about something completely different in the next panel and you're like what what is this joke what is going on here and like as a result like there's so much shit going on that you can't even follow what the fuck is happening yep like again with boba Bo, you can follow boba Bo pretty easily yeah, like you get done with this one, you get done with Chaga Chan, you're like, wow, Bova Bo sure was restrained. Yes! It's like how you have those directors who, like M. Night Shyamalan, who makes like a really great movie, and then he loses a lot of the studio control, and you realize without that, he is just too off the wire to actually be able to make a comprehensive movie. And it's just like so interesting when you see how a really, like, a really good editor fixes a lot of the issues that some of these creators have. Yeah. Well, you know, it's the old thing they used to say about, and they still say about George Lucas, where like, that's the best example. Yeah, where he made Star Wars and then he did the prequels and people were like, yo, that's George Lucas. He has an idea. It must be good. Let's nobody tell him it's a bad idea. And then he ended up with the prequels. Yeah, it's like poetry. It rhymes. It rhymes. Speaking of the pre- prequels, just you had no idea what the fuck was going on. Also, can we talk about the art on that note? Ooh. What the fuck was going on in these pages? They're just, this is messy. Like, there, there's not, like, I'm not going to say there's no character designs to like in there, but there's just, like, there are a lot of characters that are introduced rapidly in very dense frames all the time. It's not the most handsome manga I prefer. Read. No, it's not. It's interesting because we've seen this before, like, with, are you familiar with Troikyo, or I think that's how you say it, the, by the creator of Build King? Toriko? Yeah, the creator of Toriko made this manga Build King, which looks literally like if you asked Americans to draw an anime parody. Because he just completely lost the ability to comprehensively draw manga. And it's interesting to see that again in this. It's like the specific way he draws characters doesn't really bother me. Like, it's similar to how he drew characters in Boba Bo. But if you go back to Boba Bo, there's so much more space in Boba Bo. Like, you can, again, see what's happening in a panel. You <laughs> look at a panel and you're like, I know what is going on in that panel. Yeah. But here, there's so much shit. It's just so busy is the problem. It's like claustrophobic. Yeah. And all like the, like I'm thinking about like, well, what frames or pieces are did work? It's almost always when he would take the time and slow himself down to do a big one or two page image. Like when they come to the school of the guy who's sending the kids up the river and he's like the big face on the side of the building with all the tentacles. And it's just like one, two page spread with that. It's like, oh, wow, this looks nice. But then you get to the next page and it's like, oh, cool. There are 16 panels on this page. (laughs) Yeah. The composition is atrocious. Like, typically when you have a composition, you want to have a focus, like a main thing that draws the viewer's eye. And it's very rare that Chagacha does this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are actually not a lot of two-page spreads. The two-page spread from last week. Oh, God. Amber, there was a two-page spread last week that was literally just uh, the main character's ass. (laughs) Beautiful. Okay, I promise that's the last time we're going to talk about St. Muscle. <laughs> God, what a, that series is just going to stay with us forever. Yeah. Amber, though, are there any things that you feel we haven't brought up that you would consider issues with this series? We already touched on it more in the character thing, but like introducing characters that don't go anywhere yeah. is like a very much a thing in this. There's like a lot of that. Masoto, like why even have Masoto? You could cut him entirely. Yeah. Anything that he says, like, he doesn't really do anything early on. I guess he doesn't do anything ever, really. But you could pretty much... He does nothing ever. Yeah, you could give everything you needed to be said by him to uh, Himawari and it'd be fine. Imagine if, if Masoto just dies in, like, the second chapter and they have, like, this really long flashback and mourn him for, like, five chapters <laughs> when he showed up in, like, three pages. God, that would actually be re- really fucking funny. It's almost like his only purpose is to show up and go, ah, you go to the same school as me. You're in this year and I'm in this year. The school is called this. I think that is. I think that is literally what he was there for. I laugh because you have missed one other important responsibility he has where he has to do this trope, which I hate every fucking time it shows up when something ridiculous happens and the author's like, they won't get why that's funny. We need someone to say, what? You shouldn't be doing that. That's (laughs) funny because that's ridiculous. And I fucking hate that trope every single goddamn time it shows up in Gagmon. Oh, God. Yes. All the time. All the time. That's why he needed to be. That's why he was literally in this manga. So they had a character that could do that. Apparently, I forget who said this. We had them on the podcast. I forget who it was. I'm sorry. Apparently, a lot of humor in uh, like a lot of Japanese humor is based more on the reactions. Yeah. 
than American humor, but it is still, it's overdone. I mean, granted, I think this series maybe needed it because the jokes are so unclear and they keep stepping all over its, all over themselves just constantly. Yeah, it's also just, there's no plot. You gotta understand, listener, I wrote like eight sentences for that plot summary, but so much shit happens in this series. It's just that none of it matters. Yeah, it, it is so interesting when we've read other series that were not, I would say, really good, but it didn't feel like I was wasting our time. Like, um, Amber, we read a series, Nanohazard, which it, it wasn't terrible, but the entire time you're reading it, like, everything matters. It, it respected my time as a reader, which this series does not. Yeah, I would not say that it does that. Well, I mean, to be fair, uh, it gives you a lot of information really fast so you can get done faster. So <laughs> maybe that's the way that it respects your time. It's like, well, I'll just put all these jokes as close together as possible since none of them are funny, and then you can be done with it in an <laughs> afternoon. I'm going to put all the unfunny jokes together so that the other unfunny jokes can breathe. Look worse in comparison. Yes. I do want to say there were a few one or two funny jokes, so why don't we get into what it did well? So... Amber, as the most famous content creator out of the three of us, what would you say are some things you think it did well? Not every character design is bad. No. Honestly, there's like definitely so, some good ones. Like I think uh, Himawari is very cute. I really liked her. Uh, I really like the way he draws her face. It's like, just like, it's simple, but it's very cute. It's very, it's evocative. Some of the jokes worked for me. I like the rabbit that's always cutting away to jokes. The rabbit's great. I love the rabbit. The duck in the first chapter. Yeah, I like that. I like when he punches the guy to Brazil. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll be like, oh, OK. Oh, you're, you're actually doing it now. OK. Oh, and then yeah. the, the answer is no. It, just, it was just for that. But and like I said, I like the when he does take the time to do a one or two page spread, it actually is quite nice. Like when you yeah. can step away from like the clutter because it's really like the paneling that makes everything so cluttered yeah. because his art is pretty busy. But that isn't a problem if you give the specific scenes more space to breathe. Uh, so when he does like a big spread, it's like, oh, that looks really cool. It's very dense and action packed. And so that like landed for me and i liked the like the constantly escalating stakes of the show i did enjoy but it doesn't really ever pay off yeah i agree it really stood out to me there was that scene like at when they're all at the table and it's the badass as a gorilla high that was a really cool scene and that was just like a well-drawn two-page spread which made me think oh yeah this guy actually knows how to draw when he tries yeah yeah i feel like all of the best jokes in this manga involve hard-boiled cute animals <laughs> yeah yes absolutely it's like um, in Nico Wappa, which is a manga by, as we talked about as assistant, there is just this, uh, what is it, Gendo from Evangelion? Yeah. There's a hamster that is a parody of Gendo from Evangelion, who's like a commentator during this race. <laughs> it's the best joke in the whole series. And <laughs> yeah. And yeah, in this, uh, in this manga, like, let's see, we got first chapter, we got like this badass pigeon who like is super manly and has like a scar over his eye and Takacha must avenge him. And then like towards the end we got this bunny that keeps talking about how bunnies have been born in war and then there's just like these these little drawings of bunnies with like ak-47s that were actually like like i really liked yeah and then there's like this one little baby chicken this i want to say that because so it doesn't sound like i'm talking about like a girl in a strangely uh misogynist way and the chick is just like constantly saying these really like intense things and the the big bad is like he's the only guy i wouldn't want to have as my enemy just imagining the the chicken egg hatching and he's born with an eye scar already <laughs> and like an eye patch in the fucking <laughs> yeah but yeah i just also the heart fighting the kid scene that was just so over the top stupid and they think that's the space he needed to be in yeah <laughs> just he has some fun character designs as you said amber and it just makes the scenes fun but there's just god it's just oh you had you know how to make funny manga i'm just so mad that you just for some reason didn't do that with this series there were some good visual gags i also liked the dude who had like the pompadour that was like a, that was like nunchucks oh yeah uh, that was good yeah and then uh, before we go into where could have gone amber do you have any other thoughts about things you actually liked i know it's hard to think of them Oh, I liked his power where he pumps his own heart faster to make himself stronger. Yeah. I thought that was fun. <laughs> I forgot he did that. Oh my god, I did too, yeah. There's only eight chapters here, and yet we forget so much of what happens in this series. That's one of the only times where something is clearly presented as, here is my power, this is what it's called, and this is what it does. Yeah. Instead of just, like, stuff that is inexplicable happening all the time. The human <laughs> bike. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. It, never mind, it's not completely explicable. <laughs> Yeah, he's the human bike. I don't know. All right, let's get into where it could have gone. I don't even know how to transition. 
Let's bike on over to where it could have gone. There you go. Where Good could job. it have biked if it was the human bike? In terms of where it could have gone, I do like the idea. We talked about this weird like punk student world where just <laughs> imagine if they did literally every chapter introduce a new big bad and it was like <laughs> the boss. And so it just escalates infinite. It's like a staircase of escalation. And then <laughs> it just ends without resolving anything. And that was like on purpose. Kind of did that, I feel. <laughs> but except for the on purpose part. <laughs> no, I no, I hear you. I feel like this series, like, where could this series have gone? Where could it have gone? I like what? They're gonna they're gonna keep fighting in the ranks to get higher? This is gonna be our new podcast. Is we set a DD actual play radio trauma set in the Chagacha universe where we have to figure out what the plot of Chagacha is. <laughs> God. <laughs> Good luck. That's really hard. I would say that like most D D sessions are better planned out than this manga was. It's like Call of Cthulhu where you can only lose. <laughs> hey, hey, Sean McKenzie survived seven sessions of Call of Cthulhu, which may actually be a world record. <laughs> wow. My character's motivation was I get the fuck out. One of our infamouses, we were, we're we worked for like a detective agency and we had to find out if there was anything supernatural going on at this convention. And we found like this guy who got mummified like on the spot by a demon hand. And we we're like, all right. And I was like, all right, well, mission accomplished. We can go and report this. And the DM's like, or the arc player's like, don't you want to stop it? I'm like, no, nah, that wasn't the, that wasn't the objective. I'm just going to leave. And then they all, everyone else died because they tried to fight it. <laughs> You don't really win in those. Like, you don't fight those things. Yeah, that was my metagame was how long can I survive with one character? All right. Uh, yeah. So anyway, and where it could have gone. Uh, yeah. Let the jokes breathe. Um, actually just kind of established what is going on with this world student punk world. I don't really know how to fix this because it just got abandoned after a chapter. So the offer of this was dead on arrival. I mean, the problem with a gag manga is ultimately the way that you fix it is just be funnier. Yeah. Have you tried being funny, Jordan says. Like, hey, author, have you tried being funnier? I mean, I know you have in the past, but like with this manga, what can I say? Like, the real reason this failed is that it just wasn't funny, ultimately. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the pacing is a mess. It's really like if they could fix the pacing, I feel like maybe some of this would work better. Yeah. Yeah. Good pacing is that's a good one. Is there anything like more structural people can think of as ways to improve the series? Maybe this series should have gone like the Mashal route where like Mashal about 10 chapters into just being a goofy gag manga is like, all right, fine, let's let's be a shonen battle manga now. And it, it ended up working for Mashal. Like maybe this series could have just been like could have just kind of slowly turned into like a semi legit shonen battle manga. Like I, I did like the ideas for enemies. They had that one guy who just made like traffic cones appear all over him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I liked that guy. Imagine if it was like every it's a battle mug, but everyone has tune force powers. Yeah, that would work like because I think some of the parts it works better is when he actually lets the fights breathe a little bit more. and It's not constantly trying to cut away to a gag. Yeah. If I could could have just said one thing to this guy when he was writing it, just be like, dude, chill. Oh, if I could say don't. Well, OK, if I could say <laughs> a second two thing. things to this guy, I'd be like, chill or just don't. <laughs> the show again, a miscellaneous plot. <laughs> Bots, God. Let's. Yeah. So uh, I actually was reading this in Jordan. Is this set in the same universe as SWAT, which Amber, for context, is a school about really shitty schools and students just fighting each other because that's all they know? I don't even remember what SWAT was about, but I believe you. In terms of quality, maybe, because SWAT is fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Fair. That's totally fair. You don't remember SWAT. That was like our fifth episode ever. One of the most forgettable manga we've ever read anyway. Yeah, it was pretty shit. Amber, how about you? Is there anything you feel you haven't had a chance to say yet? Not just yet, I don't think. I think you make a good point here, like, at the document I'm looking at, where you say, I can't remember a lot of series of men that are okay beating up female characters. It's like, honestly, like, he does treat uh, Himawari as, like, an equal combatant and, like, a pretty high power level combatant compared to, like, your average guy in the show. And I thought that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. And for instance, the stat is Luffy has only actually had one main female antagonist he physically fights. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, and that was um, Alveda at the start of the series. Every other main antagonist is male that Luffy actually fights. Mm -hmm. Alveda, who uh, is one of the two Oda body styles and not the hot one, so it's okay, I guess. Yes, yes of course. Well, there's Big Mom. Yeah, but he doesn't f fight Big Mom directly. Oh, okay. How about this translation, guys? Yeah, the translator really liked this series, and I just don't understand how it, like, why he thought it was funny. 
the translator's notes made this into a uh, Keikaku means plan level translation for me, honestly. There were just so many things where he'd say a word and they'd be like, this actually means this word. And it's like, well, why didn't you use that word? My favorite of those is the one where they introduce human bike and there's an interesting under it that's like, I don't know, something about like motorcycles. I don't, I, I'm not entirely sure what he's going for here. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many notes where he's like, I'm not sure if this is what he meant. It may be this, I think. Mm? Yeah, he was like, I think this is a pun on the celebrity name, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Which is also one of the problems with reading these series 10 years after they came out, right? Well, 10 years after they came out from a different culture. Yeah. It's like, who's this George Clooney guy? Yeah. Well, 16 years after it came out. Don't you feel old? Don't say that to me. <laughs> Don't. I didn't need that. Oh, my God. I feel like if this also had come out more recently, it would have made fun of the Shibuya arc in Jujutsu Kaisen, if you two are familiar with that series. I'm not very far into it. I just kind of started it recently. Actually, Jujutsu Kaisen has a really great arc where there's a character who actually has Toon Force as his power and has one of the best fights in the series. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I I won't spoil anything, but he fights like a very, very major bad guy. Oh, that's fun. And it's amazing when they fight. Yeah, it's kind of like a Gear 5 kind of situation. But yeah, and then does anyone have any other miscellaneous thoughts or should I read off some of the notes Maxi B, our wonderful manga researcher, has told us? I thought it was funny how the giant head that ran Gorilla High was made with NASA parts, and then Masoto was like, God damn it, NASA. I thought that was funny. God damn it, NASA. I can never forgive NASA. Yeah, I can never forgive you, NASA, or something like that. What an iconic line. I I will never forgive the Japanese that Iraqi is introduced into our vocabulary. What's that from again? I mean, which part? It's from part three of JoJo at the very end. Oh, where God. he has to go to Japan and he's super mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I can always forgive the Maxi Bs, so let's read off some of their fun facts. This is the fastest cancellation of Weekly Shonen Jump history. <laughs> so for context, yeah. Amber, an author usually is told Chapter 8 how long they have to go. So that's how bad the situation was. He didn't even get feedback on the series before he got canceled. To the point where there is uh, famously a U19 club where uh, manga usually get to 19 chapters, but if you get under 19, it's like notable. So the fact that this got to chapter eight and canceled, that's that's pretty crazy. I wonder if it, yeah, and you got to wonder, is it like, were they like, this wasn't good, we got to get rid of this? Or was he like, man, what am I doing? What <laughs> is this? I don't know if you guys have ever watched I Think You Should Leave, the sketch comedy show. Oh, I love I Think You Should Leave. So Tim Robinson actually got fired from SNL two weeks in, and he said Tina Fey just put her hand on his shoulder and was like, this is not for you. (laughs) And I'm just imagining the editor editor doing the same thing to him. Like, uh, But yeah, and then uh, so why says in the volume edition, he tried to approach gag manga from a different direction, which did not work. But he thanks Jump for letting him try, which they shouldn't have. You know, that's nice. Yeah. And then uh, do you remember back on Cyborg Grandpa G when I was like, I used to know the guy who translated this. They do muscle fetish art now. Oh, they might have made (laughs) They might have did the last manga we read. Perhaps now that you've read Saint Muscle, you too can understand the beauty of muscles. Yeah. The translator, according to Maxi B, is named Stranger Ataru. And then uh, Chagakia started the same year as uh, Toriko and Sawai being a big fan of the author. He also had his own muscular lead character introduced while smoking a tree. It's much cooler in Toriko. Though fuck that dude because he's a pedophile. Yeah. And as everyone I'm sure is listening, they want to know the Bobobo references. Jordan, I know you've been excited about this part. Oh, yeah. Dengaku Man and Don Patch are on the first color page of the series. In chapter two, Chagakia smashes the delinquent statue into one resembling Don Patch from Bobobo. In chapter two, one of the schools on the hierarchy map is nose hair technique high and the mysterious tiger mask is also just don patch having lost his spikes and gained a disguise that's why he insists he doesn't have a leak which is don patch's weapon that's what that joke was i was so confused and explains why he freaks out seeing that one's delinquent covered in traffic cones i.e spikes oh i need to read bobo i've never actually read it bobo's pretty good i mean it's probably not as funny to me as it was when i was 15 but uh, you know i i read the first couple chapters to compare and yeah it's it's pretty good as we wrap up our conversation, when we get to the final verdict. So starting with six word summaries from our community, we have from Maxi B, nonsense manga simply makes no sense. Or Paladin, is this any good? No, 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 no. And alternatively, ooh, have fun on the honeymoon. I don't know if that was a six word summary, but thank you. I hope I do have fun. Blamumu says Yankee was funny until it wasn't. I don't know. I don't think it was ever funny in this manga. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's so mean. Dude Rock says, eight chapters somehow felt like 20. Yep. That is true. And well, at least it was short. But it felt long. Gray Potter says, somehow makes less sense than Bobo Bo. Or alternatively, translator notes, unironically, the funniest part. Lord Anubis says, weekly Shonen Jump speed run, any percent? <laughs> oh, that reminds me of a fun fact. There actually has never been a manga that ran exactly nine chapters. It was either this, and then there's five or six manga, Maxi B said, that ran for 10 chapters. So I just thought that's a weird statistic. Well, I hope somebody uh, decides to go for that specific number sometime. That's going to be the runtime for Basketball Grandma. Yeah. So, Amber, if you're unaware, I actually wrote a manga called Basketball Grandma, which for the record is way funnier than this. Right, Jordan? Well, it's not hard, but yes. But it is. It is. And then continuing on, we have from uh, Redblade. Huh? Huh? What? Huh? What? Huh? Yeah. That was our reaction, too. <laughs> I, that sounds about right. Yep. Spubby says, Mark Bobo heard <laughs> Bobo over before even Bobo can. God, that was, that's, Jordan, we gotta know that one. That's a good, that's a contender for best six word summary of the year. Bobo Bover before it even <laughs> Bobo began. Difficult. Yep. A little bit of a tongue twister, but pretty fucking good. I love it. Spike says, no, 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 is a different act series. And Smooth Criminal Moonwalk straight to acts. Spook says, the jury is in. Not funny. And T. Wolfwood says, comedy is subjective. This is shit. Yeah. Or this gagging manga is seriously unintelligible. Mm -hmm. And then Amber, what was your six word summary? Best part is when it ended. I love it. Hey, How about you, Jordan? What, 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 what? And then mine was, yeah, quitting was the right call. Mm -hmm. God, imagine if he had just like let this go on for like an hour. He could, he probably had enough star power. He could have strong armed this into like 50 chapters. I mean, here's the thing. I, I think it might have been a situation where like these panels were so busy. It clearly took a lot of effort to create this manga and it wasn't funny. So he was just like, this is too much work and I'm not really getting anything out of it. So I'm not going to keep going. Yeah. Did you notice there was like a three or four page, like one of the chapters, like chapter five or six, I think that all of the art looks completely fine and then it just falls apart again. It was really weird. <laughs> like he has like really straight line work and it's like, oh, this is so easy to look at. And then it just yeah. comes weird as shit again. I did. That was weird. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what that was about. So it might have been a scandalation thing where they do sometimes add filters to make it more readable. But it, it genuinely looked like maybe he didn't draw that chapter and he had it as assistant. I don't know. It was very strange. Yeah, maybe a 3D model. Yeah, because the way that it looks normally is like as if he was like, well, if I put more lines, it'll make up for the fact that I don't have any good jokes. Yes. Yeah. Lines, but no punch lines. Yeah, exactly. Just kick lines. That's parts of a good six word summary in there. And then uh, do we all feel like this was a certified flop? This hot piece of shit. Yeah, I'm pretty confident like in this being a flop for a good reason. Yeah. So, Amber, what would you say someone should check out instead? Well, if you're looking for uh, media about your like high school de delinquents, I really enjoyed uh, River City Girls and River City Girls 2. Both oh, that's a game, right? Games in the Kunio Kun series, which inspired this. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's a great one. And then how about you, Jordan? So I, I have a two. If you're interested in high school delinquent comedy, Cromartie High. Yeah, that's a great series. But if you're interested in just pure incoherence, uh, Xavier Renegade Angel, which <laughs> is you can somehow follow easier than this manga. God. And then my recommendation is actually a manga I got told about yesterday, <laughs> which is called Ultimate Rock, Paper, Scissors. Shout out to Andy Royd 17, where it's <laughs> about a rock, paper, scissors tournament, which includes a psych someone who can see into the future someone who can speak to ghosts in a, a multi-billionaire and a kid who has super luck powers to, to decide in this tournament who gets one wish granted by the god of rock paper scissors and it gets absolutely absurd in kanikuman there is one tournament where in order to decide the who gets in they do a rock paper scissors tournament and one of the characters who just has like claws for hands and can only do scissors and he's like fuck <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's a funnier joke than any joke in this mock yeah, Yes, really. literally. All right. So, Jordan, this actually is in the discussion. Is this the worst thing we've ever read? Somehow, no. So, you would still say School Judgment is worse than this? I'd say School Judgment is worse. I think Zahn is even worse, too. Like, that's, I forgot about Zahn, which is funny because I brought up SWAT. So, Amber, for context, SWAT, which I mentioned is one of the worst things we ever read. And then the author made a manga that's even worse than that. <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> and it's, it's, I, it is genuinely, if you look up Zan, you will be like, how is this published in Shonen Jump? Because it is potentially the worst drawn manga in Shonen Jump. Yeah. Obviously, if I'm comparing it to, oh, and School Judgment is a pedophile manga uh, about 12 year olds. And that also yes. ran in Shonen Jump and is on the official Shonen Jump app. Thank you, Shueisha. It's by the artist of Death Note. What does that mean exactly? Okay, well, we'll just bring up what we usually do when we talk about it, which is that the um, the artist said that he made an effort to show one of the characters' breasts develop in real time. And the characters are 14 ah! years old. 12, David. Ah! They're 12. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. Ah! Do you see why? Our guest did not want to finish the manga and we didn't blame him. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it's called School Judgment, and the first chapter is like, it's School Judgment, it's like Phoenix Wright in middle school. And we're like, all right, cool. And then the next few chapters, it's like, oh, that's not what this manga is actually about. Um, okay. Well, you would think the artist of Death Note could actually do whatever he wanted, but I guess that's what he wanted to do. Th- draw that se- might be the problem. <laughs> yeah, like- he's like, I just want to draw sexy 12-year-olds, guys, come on. Oh, so that's bad for a different reason than Zahn and uh, SWAT. But yeah, that's go to jail was the tier we go put to in. jail bad. <laughs> but yeah, Chagacha, the thing is, it is bad. It is hard to follow, but it's kind of interesting in a lot of moments. And there are a few jokes that do land. This is not completely without merit in the same way that SWAT and Zahn are just wastes of time. Just completely. There's no reason to ever read those manga. Now, Jordan, is this better or worse than Ichigoki's Under Control, which is the worst gag manga I think we've ever read? I, th- I still think that, fuck, what was that one about the bodyguard, the kid bodyguard with all the penis jokes? Oh, in the yeah. I think that one's first. I think, first of all, that one's worse. You're right. That is worse. You're right. Um, I don't even remember its name. It was that bad. <laughs> I think that Chagacha is still better than that one. All right. I, but I think Ichigoki is better than Chagacha. All right, that's fair. So why don't we get into a wrap up and get done talking about this manga. Amber, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. You've made it to the end. You never have to think about Chagacha ever again. (laughs) Where can people find all of the fantastic things you do? Okay, so you can find me on uh, Twitch TV slash Bloodberry Tart or on Twitter at uh, Bloodberry underscore Tart. Or uh, ideally, you should check out my podcast, Skulltenders, which you could find on Apple Podcasts or YouTube or Spotify. Or you could go to Skulltenders.com slash subscribe and subscribe to the RSS feed. Sounds good. Yeah, I need to catch up. I've I've listened to the first three episodes. By I, I I oh I should listen to it on my flight to New Zealand. Thank you, Amber. That's a great idea. <laughs> I'm glad I came up with it. Amber's like, why did our New Zealand listener numbers triple? <laughs> 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 oh man that's awesome i also just say props to jordan for making the opening ending theme being a great co-host and helping with editing oh thank you for everything that you do david i also want to say props to mer lyle for the awesome cover art you can find her online at lyle mer and nigel for being our generous art benefactor also a big thank you to maxi b for picking what our art would be this episode thank you dylan for assistance with editing find his podcast anime out of context at anime thanks to tucker and maxi b for assistance with pronunciation translation other miscellaneous research find us on twitter at shonen flopcast tumblr shonen dash flop our website shonenflop.com we're also on spotify itunes youtube wherever else you get your podcast come join the shonen flop discord open to everyone patron or not Come hang out with us and talk about anime, games, or whatever else is on your mind. You can find a link to it in our show notes or on our site. And if you've been enjoying the podcast and want to help us keep going, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Wouldn't be able to keep the show running without their support. You also get a ton of awesome perks. Jordan, what episode are we dropping in March for our patrons? <laughs> David, we are covering the second part of, of the Ichinose family's Deadly Sins. Nice. I got did it. it. I did, did it. it. I got it. I pronounced it correctly. I always fuck up the title of that series. <laughs> and then who was our guest? Oh, Crimson Rogue. Oh, hell yeah. Winner of our best episode of the year for 2023. Yeah, for Shonen Shoujo, which is a that's a manga I, I can't even describe. Look up. Look up the yeah. manga. Like, look up the episode. Don't read it. Just look up the episode. Yeah. You could even be listening to our recordings live or listening to the warm patio. Find it at patreon.com slash shonen flop. And I want to read off some of our wonderful patrons. Starting with our dolphin dads, we have Glornak, Rachel, my wonderful fiance. She is stuck in the airport, so I just sent her money to buy a little cheeseburger. And Sean awoke my slumbering womanhood with his double tall loin latte, Starbucks. I cried. Jesus. We have some strange patrons. Just so you know, Amber, a lot of these are dirty things about people on a completely different podcast from us. 
<laughs> yeah, we we have a sister podcast called Anime Out of Context, which we share the same editor, so we have a lot of overlap. So yeah, there's a lot of crossover. And then moving on down to the Ravioli tier, where you get weekly pictures of my little goblin dog Ravioli from my Magic Gathering deck. I'm making Ravioli cards, so if people want one, let me know, and I'll send you a Ravioli token. Did I have one? A Ravioli token? I mean, yeah, I should be able to. Hell yeah! Yay! <laughs> we have Chris, Eva, Lady T, Matt, T, and Trevor Schechner. Moving on down to the King of the Forest, we have 090Z, Bandit Stoof. My girlfriend! Bling Bang Bang, which is actually Bling Bang Bang Bling Bang Bang, which is the actual unofficial sequel to Bobo Bo. Ooh! Chad Mason, Jacob Andrew Galloway, Kirby Mon, Marty, Max Baker, Riley, Sarah, T. Wolfwood, and Tommy Boy. Along with that, a big thank you to our Galactic Ball Federation officers and our Beast Children. Yes, thank you so much. I love you all very much. You're all important to me. And Jordan, I'd love if you have anything else you want to toss in. Yeah, check out my podcast, uh, Mission Ignition, about a bizarre TV show fever dream called Vampires. That's N as in Nancy. And our most recent episode that we released, actually, as a guest, had Josh, a.k.a. Jess's husband. And by Jess, I mean Jess from Skulltenders. That was more convoluted than I intended it to be. It's but okay. yeah, check it out. Missionignition.libson.com or just enter Mission Ignition fucking anywhere. Yeah, there you go. Since David gave me shit for not telling anybody to just type in Mission Ignition on Spotify like you usually do with podcasts. Okay, David. You're welcome. Thank you. Watch as your listenership in New Zealand doubles as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into sign off. Thank you so much for joining us. Tune in next Monday as Jordan and Dylan give their first thoughts on Service Wars. Oh my god. This has been David. This has been Jordan. And this has been Amber. You've been listening to Shonen Flop. Keep on flopping floppers in the yeah. free world. Yeah. Flop, 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 flop. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>